Hello everyone and welcome to Nerdy Boys Reviews. We're your hosts, I'm Nerdy Boy Christian. And I'm Nerdy Boy Scott. And this is Nerdy Boys Reviews, your nerd podcast that talks about the latest and greatest in nerdy news, movies, and television. So, explicit content warning, material on this podcast may not be suitable for all listeners of all ages, so you have been warned. What's up, dude? What's up? How you been? Oh, you know. Just, just dandy. Yeah. It's, everything's been like... How about you? Everything's been very crazy with all this quarantine stuff and working from Guys. home. <laughs> Last time I was on this podcast, we were not in a pandemic. Exactly. <laughs> So, the world just changed, as you know. Right. We're in a pandemic. The coronavirus has arrived. Yes. And making people crazy and shit. Right. And whether you think it's stupid or not as big a deal as people are making it, or whether you think it's fucking the end of society, we're past all that, all we can do now is... Try to follow what they're telling us and get this shit over with because we need to get back to work and we need to get back to, you know, being not fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys can help it, you know, just just follow the social distancing. I know where we live, um, they're going to be really cracking down on people who are not doing essential tasks or non-essential workers, they're going to be t- like cracking down on like finding them. And I think if you like let it happen, like like two or three times, like they, they have the option to take you to jail and shit like that. Like it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Like we live in Sacramento. Right. And at first, like they have like the stay in place order and everything, but like they weren't really enforcing it because like people were, kind of following it and stuff and then like out of nowhere dude like a couple weeks go by and people just fucking decide to do the dumbest shit right so it started out in the bay area they have like side shows which anybody knows like what a side show is people have a freaking huge gathering of people like and like they're like just playing music and like oh, doing like donuts in their car and i've never been to a side show so i don't know fully what it entails I kind of know what it is. And, like, yeah, so it's just, like, it's kind of like a street car show where people are just doing, like, donuts and shit. Well, people start doing that shit here in Sacramento, and fucking that's what started them, like, a couple days ago. They, like, on the news, they were talking about how they're going to enforce the stay-at-home policy now. Yeah. So thanks a lot, assholes. Well... Don't be that person, guys. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Don't be that person... If, if you can help it, you know, go do your errands and everything, but follow the social distancing uh, rules that are in place. Stay at home if you can help it, and let's just all get through this. Because if you're anything like me, I'm sick of hearing about this crap. I'm tired of having to fucking do all this stupid shit and not be able to do anything, and it yep. sucks, but we're all in this together. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of talking about it because, you know, we have a friend, Daniel, who consistently wants to talk about this with me. And all he wants to do is complain Mm -hmm. about how his constitutional rights are being infringed on and everything. And, like, I've tried to explain to him over and over, you cannot have both freedom and safety. So anytime you want to protect the public or anything else, they're going to infringe on your rights. That's just how it is. That's why you can't yell fire in a movie theater this is how our society works. And he's like, well, I'm just going to do what I want. And I'm like, what do you want to do? I want to go to the movies. Well, you fucking can't because they're closed. So just fucking chill the fuck out. Calm down. Right. Well, the only two activities that Daniel does is, like, eat at, like, random places. And, like, they're usually not even, like, like a restaurant or anything like that. They're, like, more of, like, hole-in-the-wall diner type things. Like, he likes to go to, like, taquerias that I can tell. Yeah. And, like, some pizza places and things like that. And then, like, goes, he goes to the movies. That's it. Like, like I understand, like, having the, the few things that you do like to go out and do, taking away, totally sucks. And I, I totally agree, yeah. you know, but it's just like, dude, 90% of the time, Daniel is like me, and he's like a homebody. He's sitting there playing video games all the time. So it's like, 
for me, I don't really feel like anything has changed, to be honest, because I'm essential. That's right, people. I am an essential worker. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to leave my house every day and go and make, you know, money and stuff. And, you know, I don't work from home. So, yeah, I think not it's, a whole lot has changed for me. I think it's like honest. a thing where it's like when you're like not being told you have to stay inside, you're good with it. And like, you don't want to go out. But when they're telling you, you have to stay inside, like that's when people are like, well, I want to go out. I want to do stuff. Like, it, I don't know if it's like, it's just a like human nature thing, you know? But yeah, like, I think it's hilarious. Dude. Cause like never have I like seen so many people out walking the street and like, true. like, like little kids outside playing on their bikes and like playing with sidewalk chalk and stuff and like just like shit that I actually grew up with. I'm just like, I guess this is what it took for like their parents to be stuck in the house with them all day to be like, get the fuck out of my house. Dude, yeah, there's these kids in our in my neighborhood that like, I think they're playing like Fortnite like outside like they like put like all like these toy weapons all over the neighborhood and like run around and pick them up and shoot each other oh my god that's <laughs> fantastic <laughs> but like yeah anyway like if you guys are feeling like anxious about this or like you know you you hate being cooped up like we're all going through it it sucks but the only way to get through this is to just do it because if you keep breaking the rules they're gonna just extend all this shit even if you think it's stupid even if you think it's not it, it doesn't make any difference it, it, they'll they'll push against it because that's how the, that's how this country works right and and, and okay on, on a very serious note though because i was talking about this i was just, like thinking a lot about this and like trying to start seeing things in the news service a little bit and whatnot and like i just think like with something like this like a lot of people's like social avenues to like deal with like things like depression and stuff is probably like I would probably think that something like this would cause like depression and uh, suicide the rates to go up. Yeah. So if you guys are feeling lonely, if you guys are feeling like you know like your life doesn't matter or whatever it is that you feel, if you're feeling depressed and maybe that you want to take your own life and stuff, please reach out to somebody. Uh, whether it's us, the Nerdy Boys, you can contact us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you know, me and Christian both have our own personal Twitters. You can reach us on there. And I'd just like to take, because uh, I look into it a lot, and the National Suicide Prevention uh, Lifeline is still active. Uh, it's considered an essential need. So that number is 1-800-273-8255. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm probably going to have Christian post that number, like in the details of the podcast and stuff. Um, so, you know, I just want people to have their options and, uh, you guys aren't alone in the way you guys feel. And I know I'm here for you and I'm sure Christian is there for you too. If you need somebody to talk to, uh, please don't stay silent and, you know, talk to somebody. If it's not us, if it's not the hotline, reach out to your friends or your family. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in even if it's like your depression or anxiety has turned to like anger, you know, like it's good to be able to have an outlet, talk to somebody, get get that out because you don't want to keep all that negativity and toxicity inside you because it'll just eat you up. So, well, yeah. And Scott's absolutely right. I, I read an article last week that two high schoolers in unrelated incidents took their own lives as a result of this. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no girls. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, one was like uh, Rancho Cordova area, and I'm not sure where the other one was. Maybe it was Elk Grove, but yeah, it, I mean, maybe it's even more. Maybe those are even unrelated more cases. And you then, know? like, I see my friend on Twitter post about like he retweeted his friend, his girlfriend had like taken her own life oh, God. and stuff, and I was just like, dude, this is like getting like crazy, dude. Yeah, like. Uh, Suicide, and I, I thought about this a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and I was just like, dude, I can just see it happening, you know? I can just see people that, you know, where they get that little bit of social outlet, you know, to make it feel like everything's okay. Right. They're no longer getting that. They're, you know, people are stuck in the house. They're stuck inside their own head. 
And, you know, things, yeah. you know, mental health, dude, it doesn't take a break for anybody. Not me, not you, not no virus, COVID-19. No, it doesn't take a break for anybody. Right. Well, and, and, and I, you know, I just want everybody to know that if, if nobody else, you know, the nerdy boys are here for you. Right. And, and even um, like, like a positive is that they are allowing us to go out for walks or runs or exercise outside as long as you're, you know, adhering to social distancing. So like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I know for both Scott and I, like when we lived together and everything else, like years, you know, that was like one of our best outlets was just to walk and talk and, you know, get that like walking for some reason just helps you like put you in a better mood, you know? So like, it's in a better mood. It helps you like stay food. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It's really good. Um, so, okay. We've obviously gone through the pandemic and stuff. What else is new? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, uh, I'm able to work from home. I don't have to. I'm allowed to go into work if I want to. Um, but I've just been working from home. My work is only literally two minutes down the street. So if I need anything, I can go there, pick it up, or do work there or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I've just been working from home. Um, you know, it's been it's been fine. I, I get all my work done. My company has been very helpful. Uh, I work for like a local grocery chain that, um, you know, I work corporate. So, you know, we had a new store opening last week. So I was helping with that. Um, and our company has been doing a lot. Like we're donating to every food bank in every neighborhood that we're in. We're delivering groceries to people who need them. And, you know, I feel like, you know, very fortunate to work for a company that cares about the community so much. They care about their employees. You know, they're giving us uh, bonuses for hourly employees. And, um, yeah, so it's been it's been good. And, you know, I'm grateful to have a job and to be able to continue to work and not have to stress about, you know, not being able to pay my rent like a lot of people do. Like, it's very unfortunate that, yeah. you know, like it's not just people dying it's people losing their livelihoods as well, just as much. So, yeah, which in a lot of cases can be so much worse, right? You know, because just life will spiral out of control at that point, dude. Yeah, I just implore everyone to try to like you know take care of your mental health, but also stay informed, know what to look for because there's a lot of misinterpreted information. There's a lot of news that is misleading. <laughs> Um, you know, and even like the death rate is very misleading right now. Like it, it, you have to kind of compare a lot of different news reports to get to the truth. Right. Yeah. So, um, because like when you see 32,000 or whatever we're up to now in the United States dead, that sounds really bad. But then when you see that heart attacks and cancer deaths have dropped 75%, well, it's not that people aren't dying from those. It's just, they're not counted as those deaths. Uh, so right, yeah, I forgot her name, but like one of the one of the doctors that works like closely with like Doctor like Fauci, everybody knows. Yeah, Burks. Who that is by now? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I think Doctor Burks or whatever. She was saying like, like literally live on TV. It was like the craziest thing to me that she even said this was like basically the 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 gist of it is if if you die with COVID nineteen or had COVID-19 and die, then they will count that as a COVID-19 death. Right. If it's... Regardless, regardless of what the actual cause is, like, say, say I have COVID-19, but the cause of death was a heart attack or cancer or whatever the, the, the cause may be, they will still say it was a COVID-19 death. Right. Unless, Even like, you were true. shot in the head or something. But, like... Right. Um, right. The, the the example, right. the, the most prominent example is the six week old who died, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, childrens are dying from this now." That child actually died from suffocation. It was rolled over by its caretaker and couldn't breathe and died of suffocation. They tested him after he died, COVID nineteen. They counted it and reported it as a COVID nineteen death, but it's it's not. Excuse me. Yeah. So yeah, it it's crazy. just important to. Uh, I think it's borderline criminal, in my opinion, that they're allowed to do that. I think it does nothing but cause mass panic. Right. Uh, when people see the death toll rising, they're like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing ever. But then once you actually take into account that not only is the death toll completely inflated at the moment, but more than likely the diagnosed cases are probably also inflated. 
take it what you will. Make of what make of the situation <laughs> what you want. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. important overall to stay informed and you know, you can believe what you want. You have that right as a person, but you know, stay informed and try not to get into many arguments online because that's just a great way to destroy your your mood. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so uh, there's a ton of stuff there with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm pretty sure we announced on the podcast that my son was born. We didn't. Uh, in January. Oh, we did not? No. Uh, I, I did on a subsequent podcast mention it, but... Um, the last podcast we did was, I believe, for Star Wars um, in December. So your son had not been born yeah. yet. Oh, wow. My son is born and he is healthy. Uh, he was born uh, January 10th. Uh, best day of my life. <laughs> Hands <laughs> back. Best day of my life. Um, yeah, he's pretty much old now. He's super happy, super healthy, super obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he does like the most ridiculous things sometimes, dude. <laughs> like, he'll sit there, like, he hates having his diaper on. Like, you know, some kids don't care. You know, but like, he, like, even if it's like a little bit, and like, it doesn't matter how much uh, amount is in the diaper, once we see the blue line, we change the diaper because that's just the thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like hygienic, you know? Uh, but, anyways, like, if it, it doesn't matter how much is in there. He, like, he just hates it. He hates it. And he screams, dude, like, and he started, like, noticing that he has a voice, and so he, like, tested how loud he can go, and he just, like, cries and screams and stuff uh, over the diaper, and then as soon as you, like, put him down and, like, you realize you're about to change his diaper, he'll fucking start laughing, dude. Oh, God. It's, it really, like, a <laughs> Because, like, he'll do it, like, in the middle of the night when everyone's trying to sleep. Because, like, we don't have our own place, so it's not like it's just us and, like, okay, whatever, you know? Right. It's like, you know, everyone else, we're, like, trying to, like, be, like, consciousness and whatnot. And so, like, we try to, you know, he doesn't really cry for no reason, which is great. Like, there's always something. Because now he's already starting to tease it, which is, like, pretty, pretty early for most uh, infants. But, uh, so it's, like, either... He's tired, he's hungry, he's wet, or it's his uh, teething. I think Matt, he doesn't, he doesn't just cry just to cry. Like, he doesn't really cry just to be, like, held and stuff like that. Like, he's pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah. Are you enjoying being a father? Yes. I mean, it has its, uh, its very trying moments, but I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty great. And then, uh, you know, outside of that, um, oh, I got a new job. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, no longer a cook. Um, I just decided, you know, my me and my girl, we had a conversation. Basically, I got too comfortable uh, at my previous job. And she's like, you know, basically <laughs> wanting me to push myself at this point. Like, she's been pushing me for so long to get something better. That, you know, she's like, all right, I'm going to stop pushing me. And, like, you got to do it yourself, man. Which, you know, that's what we get. And, you know, I respect that. And I take it very serious, uh, too. And so um, now I'm a delivery driver for Amazon. Well, I work for a company called SureShot Cargo, uh, which is subcontracted to do Amazon deliveries. Like, I'm still completely an Amazon, like, work attire. And, like, I drive a blue Amazon van that you guys see come and deliver your stuff to your house. But uh, I work for a company called Sure Shot Cargo. I think, like, Amazon has, like, 18 different subcontractors to do their deliveries. Pretty sure it's just because they're, like, they outsource it because it's more cost-effective for them to do it because they're, like, <laughs> they're, like, the biggest company in the world. Right. So, you know, they got to cut costs somehow. Boy. And uh, yeah, dude, it's like it's been an awesome experience. It's been pretty fun uh, so far. Uh, I think I'm pretty much like in my second week uh, now. I work like four. It's it's a great schedule too. I really like the schedule. It's like four days a week, and I get three days off, and it's like ten hour days, so I still get forty hours a week. And uh, I already started making two dollars more an hour, uh, like just off of the jump, you know. And then on top of that, Amazon is giving two dollars an hour on top of what we already make for the um, because of COVID nineteen. And then, 
So here's like the only thing that I kind of are like been a little bit of a downer for my work. So my work would allow us, um, like basically once we're done with our route, uh, we would do something called a rescue, which basically we just go to another driver, take packages off their hand and deliver it for them. And then usually they'll be like, okay, return to station. Then you return and do all your stuff and whatnot. And then, um, you know, you just clock out, uh, clock out for the day, and uh, which I totally forgot to do again today. <laughs> oh, God. oh, oh my God, dude! It's so hard to remember, dude, because like they have you do it on your personal phone. Mm-hmm. It's like on an uh, ADP app and stuff. Oh. And uh, dude, I, I this is like the second day in a row I freaking forgot to clock out, man. Do you have like an HR so, or a payroll person you can email? Yeah, there is, but like she goes through. Okay, this is what this was my point. The only downer thing was so say if uh, I'm scheduled to work nine thirty to uh, eight, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nine thirty to eight, and say I get off at, I get back to the station. I'm all like literally ready to go, and they're like, "Okay, you can go home." And it's five o'clock. They would pay me out the additional three hours. So that was a good thing. But then, because Amazon is paying uh, Sure Shot Cargo uh, the two additional dollars an hour, they did an audit into uh, the payroll stuff. And then, I, apparently, it's, it's a breach of contract with the two companies. It's somewhere in the contract. Like, they can't really, like, gift hours or do uh, uh, day pay and stuff like that. So they're pretty much giving us to the end of the month, and they're going to stop that. But what they are already doing to like kind of offset like the loss of money is they're giving us a raise. Hmm. So, so I'm going to be making fifteen dollars with two additional dollars per hour for the COVID nineteen. Nice. So, and then after my first two weeks, I could do incentive to make if I hit all three incentives, I'll be an extra dollar an hour. So, you know, I'm making a lot more money. Like, I was only at, like, $13 an hour at my other job, and I'm already up to, like, almost 16 And then plus two is 18 and, and the possibility of another dollar, $19 an hour, like, I mean, I don't know a lot better. <laughs> right. Today and, like, yesterday was a struggle because I hurt my knee pretty bad, like, bruised, like, the bones, like, pretty badly, and, like, been really hard to walk, which making deliveries, makes it almost impossible just kind of work through it and stuff and but i'm getting better though I'm getting better yep. <laughs> yeah it's good man it's good that you know like you're still able to work and everything you know you're very important to keeping things running as well so it's good yeah i've been mean, having a lot of people like say thank you and stuff which is nice i mean it's totally not needed but <laughs> yeah i mean as long as they're not cussing you out right Right. I did almost get bit by a dog today. Oh. Like, like the dog, like, ran out of the house, and, like, it was, like, a little ankle biter dog, so. Oh, God. Like, it, it was, like, started biting me, and, like, kind of stopped. So, it kind of, like, nipped at me. And, like, I was, like, looking at the owner. I was so mad. I was like, <laughs> like I'm um, about to fucking punt um, your dog to the other side of the universe. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's uh, all that's really going on with me at the moment. Nice. Okay, okay. Well, much like our lives and everybody else's lives being super impacted by COVID-19, as is the way with the nerd world and the nerd news, Comic-Con 2020 has been canceled. Not postponed, canceled. Will return in 2021. That's Comic-Con International in San Diego. First time in 50 years it's been canceled. This is sad news, right? Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I've kind of fallen out with the whole keeping up with, like, nerd stuff and, like, Comic-Cons and stuff. Like, it's just never been so crazy for me. Even, like, trying to do this podcast, we've had to, like, reschedule, like, three or four times. Right. Well, it's like understandable. That. Like, like you mentioned, like, you know, now you're a father, you just started a new job, everything, like, it's very understandable, so 
That's why, you know, hey, guys, if you've been wondering where Scott's been or why the podcast has been inconsistent, you know, we're busy, lots of things going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll try to put things out when Scott can't podcast and stuff, just randomness, maybe talk about books or whatever. But this is this is the way, guys. This is the way. This is the way. So, um, yeah. Uh, on, uh, I mean, additional things, Black Adam production has been delayed shocking black widow has been pushed back to november eternals is being pushed back to february of next year the whole phase four slate will be moved around um so yeah but on the other side james gunn says neither suicide squad nor guardians of the galaxy 3 will be delayed um i don't know how he can promise guardians 3 won't be delayed because i don't think we even knew when that was coming out so whatever Uh, okay dude and Suicide Squad is in post production already. They're already finished filming, so no surprise. And then Marvel's doing their What If uh, series for Hulu that's like animated, and they're just going to continue production on that remotely. So that won't be delayed either. Um, but let's see. Um, I think I think the Batman movie is going to be delayed, but um, I know that like the director mentioned that. He's not going to use the time to rethink the script or anything. Like, um, he's very interested in telling a tale about Bruce Wayne's humanity and kind of how he deals with both being Batman and and Bruce Wayne. So, do, do you think that's an interesting concept at all? Uh, hmm. A little bit, like, yes and no. I mean, like, it's an interesting chance. Like, I just feel like it's already kind of been addressed already. Right. You know, like, it's kind of like, kind of like a recurring thing in, like, most of the Batman movies. Right. Maybe, you know, and even, like, Arrow from Arrowverse, which is basically Batman, had, like, the same thing go on. Yeah. So, I mean, like, how many times are you going to do the same? Right. So what he what he said was, I wanted to not do an origin tale, but a tale that would still acknowledge his origins and that it formed who he is. Like this guy, he's majorly struggling, and this is how he's trying to rise above that struggle. But that doesn't mean that he even fully understands. It's the whole idea of the shadow self and what's driving you and how much of you, uh, how much of that you can incorporate and how much of it you're doing that you're aware of. Mm, so, interesting. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it's not like a pure I mean, origin it's story. It's like, but like an origin story is like, it's like super needed. You know what I mean? Like, but the thing about Batman is like, you can switch parts of his, I mean, the basic thing is, like, the alley scene, right? It's, like, that's the most important part of his origin. Like, everything else can kind of be, like, altered or switched in a way. You know, it's, like, you don't have to use the same villain that you've right. always seen. And, like, like, you can do it in a very cool way and, like, whatnot. And because, it's like, you kind of seen, like, I feel like that was, like, part of, like, the downfall or demise of, like, Ben Affleck, like, Batman. Is like you never got an origin story. You just had a character that was just thrown in that, like, the audience knows he's Batman, but like in the terms of like writing and stuff, it's like it doesn't really make sense. Right. Well, and like, he's ideologically like, not Batman. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like I don't know. It's like it's weird because it's like, yeah, we all know he's Batman and stuff, and like, yeah, most of us know his backstory and stuff, but like, there's. In, 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 like, in, in story time, it's, it's very basic. It's like, there's a beginning, middle, and end, right? Well, with Batman, you pretty much got, like, the end. <laughs> like, it was, like, already, like, super old, right? Like, he's always talking about, like, how much he didn't know how much he had, like, left in his body and stuff, and there's, like, some mementos, like, from, like, years before and all that good stuff, and it was kind of like he was already established as Batman for assumingly a long, long time. And right. it was just like, we were just kind of thrown into like this person that we don't, we're not emotionally invested in because we didn't get the beginning in the middle, you know? Right. Well, it's also just so a, I think, 
Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so I just think like the idea of like skipping over the origin stories, no matter how many times you've done it, it's necessary because you need the beginning. You need to know the motivation and like, Knowing that motivation, it gives you a sense of like caring towards the character. You're emotionally invested in the character. Right. I, I feel like with that version of Batman, though, is also just a Batman that to <laughs> some of us is kind of unrecognizable. Like, I think you can do a Batman movie that doesn't play out his origin as much. Um, yeah. But the way that that movie did it, like, they threw in a character that is. Batman and Bruce Wayne by name, but then it, it, he hates Superman because Superman allowed all these innocent people to die. But then he just goes driving around balderdashly, killing people over like like you're you're a hypocrite. You're doing the same thing. I don't I don't understand you like your ideology at all. But whatever, <laughs> yeah. that's how I feel about it. But you guys maybe have a different opinion. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. <laughs> yeah so the main focus of of what we're going to talk about really we have a we have a fun exciting topic to talk about um gray jedi and star wars um so i'll finish off with a couple pieces of star wars news before we get into that um the rogue one writers say that cassie and andor was almost an imperial double agent so when they were initially writing the script um he was supposed to be like secretly working for the empire um, but then they like kind of refined his character over time and decided they landed in a better place by having him be a rebel who kind of is in that gray area and is willing to kill for the rebellion and, and kind of walk that line in a way. Um, so what do you think? Do you think it's better how they ended up or would you have rather him been like a double agent empire guy? Uh... Uh... Well, I like how they did it, you know? Yeah. I, I think there's very few things you can criticize about Rogue One because I think it's a movie that wasn't necessary, but it, in spite of that, it was really good. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't think... I don't think it would have been better to have him be a double agent. Like, some of that stuff kind of annoys me where it's like, it's like, we know that he's a double agent but she doesn't and we're gonna see how this plays out like i I don't know stuff like that kind of annoys me sometimes so um but yeah anyway last piece of news ahmed best if you guys don't know who that is he plays jar jar binks in star wars um (laughs) he says that the new star wars projects lack faith in the mythology so this is i only pulled this article because we're pretty much going to be talking about the mythology of star wars as it relates to gray jedi um so uh this is what he said uh he said the lack of faith in the mythology is really the thing i find to be missing we don't talk about the force anymore in the star wars movies we're really about lineage and legacy and line and technology but the thing that made star wars work was the force there are two sides the light side and the dark side uh, but we all believed in the force. So, yeah. oh, oh, oh! This is fun. He did mention the Jar Jar as a Sith Lord fan theory. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I think the Jar- the Darth Jar Jar theory helped a lot because I think the people who really enjoy that theory are people who aren't fans of Jar Jar. They are the ones who really fall into the Darth Jar Jar theory as well. Like I've said before." There were some things I did that were picked up on, and it's quite fun, that idea, to think of that. And it goes along with the piece that's missing, which is the mythology piece, the thing that I think Star Wars is missing, the faith piece, the thing to believe in. What do you think? Interesting. I I think I think in some ways he's um, right. Yeah. But in other ways, it's like really what the new star wars projects are missing is a coherent plan <laughs> so right like i i think they do still talk about the force and even like the last jedi even though people hate it and there's like problems with it like it's almost like a love letter to the force in a way but like yeah other parts of it do feel kind of hollow i just think that it it's like I still enjoy the movies, but I can't get myself excited to watch the new movies, you know? 
Interesting. Interesting. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I thought about watching Rise of Skywalker again today, and I was like, I just, there's so many problems, I can't get myself to watch it. <laughs> I mean, I understand. Yeah, I understand. I mean, on the other hand, I did watch The Last Jedi a couple weeks ago, and I actually really enjoyed it. But then, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, the even, like, the first time I watched Rise of Skywalker, I really liked it. But, like, after we talked about it and after, like, thinking about it, I'm just like, gosh, I, I can't be excited to watch this movie because... Like, most of it just isn't exciting. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, and not to mention, like, they they, they quite often pull the rug out from under you, like, far too quickly in that film, and it's just like, the payoff is just never there. Right. Like, I mean, there's, like, some cool things, and, like, so it'll tie into our next discussion. Um, I kind of have like a theory about what the new saga is really about. Don't know if I'm right. Probably not. But I mean, we'll talk more about that next. But I mean, I mean, it's just like I don't know. It's just like it's kind of hard because it's like you, like my girl, has been like kind of getting more into Star Wars. And she mainly likes it because she, she's, like, in love with Anakin. <laughs> like, once he, like, grows up, you know? And, like, what, like I think the second episode, like, when you see him, like, more as, like, a teenager slash young adult. Right. She thinks, like, he's so hot. So, like, she's been, like, watching those ones. But he looks just like, like Obi-Wan pretty... from episode one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of. Kind of. Better looking. Better looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just like, even like she kind of like, yeah, I don't like the new stuff or whatever, but I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. I mean, so, okay. I think, I think Anakin in episode two is like the worst version of Anakin. <laughs> like, but I, I do agree with like some things he says. Like, a lot of people criticize the sand line, but sand does suck, and it does get everywhere, and it is hot, okay? Like, it's okay to hate sand. So... No, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, so... Um, we're gonna talk... We're talking about Grey Jedi, and you guys might not know what that is, because it's not really, oh, like... I'm gonna explain it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you explain it. I'm just going to tell everyone, like, it's not, it's not necessarily quote unquote canon in the way that like in the movies, it's never expressly talked about. Um, but we'll talk about it and we'll even mention some people maybe from like other star Wars series, like that are canon, like the cartoons, like the clone wars and rebels and kind of bring it all together. So Scott, just tell everybody what the fuck is a gray Jedi. So it's pretty much somebody who like lies between in between so okay, the, uh, each each like section of like a force user is either the Jedi or the Sith, right? And they have their own code. So the uh, the Jedi code is there's no emotion, uh, there is peace. There's no ignorance, there is knowledge. There's no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There's no death, there is the Force. So and then there's the Sith code. Peace is a lie. There's only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Uh, through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall set me free. Yes. And essentially, so like Jedi were like, essentially like, they're like the peacekeepers in like the universe. But like, it's a little it's a little intricate, right? Because, like, they don't just, like, get involved in every little, like, squabble. It's only when things are, like, inherently very bad that they're like, okay, we need to get involved now. Right. And, and you go then, back like, to 
uh, the line from Mace Windu, we're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Exactly. Exactly. And then, like, the Jedi, like, they use, you know, the Force more for good, and they're, like, more, like, they're, like, they believe, like, oh, uh, like, how can I say it? I don't know what I was going with that, but anyway. And then, like, the Sith, they're, like, more, like, they, they bend uh, the Force to their will right? Like, they use the Force in order to gain what they want. Whereas the Jedi just kind of, like, like, everything is the Force, you know? Right. So, the Grey Jedi, they're kind of, they, they, they lie in between, right? They use both the light and the dark side of the Force. So, the Grey Jedi code is, there's no dark side nor a light side. There's only the Force. I will do what I must to keep the balance. There is no good without evil, but evil must not be allowed to flourish. There is passion, yet peace. There is serenity, yet uh, emotion. There is chaos, yet order. Right. So it's like very like middle of the road, and like they kind of like they're more like proactive with like using the force, like to like in order to, like, defend, like, the universe, like, but they they also tap into the dark side of the Force, too, you know? They use, they just complete, they use the Force completely. Right. It's important to note, though, that there are no gray Sith. If you're a Sith, you are not a gray Jedi. Right. Like, like there are, there are Jedi, quote-unquote, that fall into the gray Jedi category, but there are no Sith that fall into the Great Jedi category. Yeah. So, um... Where are we going with this? So, so, yeah. Basically, like, if you if you listen to what Scott said about the codes, Great Jedi are essentially Jedi who have issues with the uh, uh, construction of the Jedi Order, essentially. They, they don't believe that you can't have attachments to other people. They don't believe certain things in that aspect. And so they, they would not even be really accepted into the Jedi Order. So you look at characters like Qui-Gon Jinn, who actively tried to work against the Council to make sure Anakin got trained. Um, there, are, there are other characters who don't necessarily fit into the box of a Jedi, even if they are quote-unquote Jedi Knights, um, because they don't follow the quote-unquote structure of the Jedi. They don't follow the exact code of the Jedi. They, there are characters like from the books who maybe you're not familiar with, but like one of them is Quinlan Voss, who taps into the dark side, who uses the Force to... He can touch things and, and see what who else has touched them or where else they've been, um, and that's all through the Force. And he, he even was in a relationship with a girl who was the apprentice of Count Dooku while they tried to assassinate him, and he tapped into the dark side a lot but he was still, quote-unquote, a Jedi. But he doesn't really fall into the Jedi category. Right. You know, when, when like, even Anakin, you know, he, he essentially betrayed the Jedi code by being with Padme. But, like, that, that, that's, a, that's a distinct difference between him and other Jedi who believe that you can't have... Um, outside attachments, you can't feel certain emotions because you need to be above that. You need to to give yourself to the force. The force is your only uh, a companion, right? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think there was like a point where Anakin it was like right before he completely turned evil. Like there was a point where he was kind of like a great guy, like kind of like that brief. <laughs> moment when he was kind of like with Padme and like once he like starts breaking like the, the Jedi code I think he floated into the great Jedi and then like you know a lot of other things happened and became the fair. Yeah. I don't so, think he I don't think he ever fully embodied what it means to be a great Jedi. I think he moved into that territory but like he was never purely a great Jedi. Like he was always kind of right. just lost as a person and that's what led him down his path to the dark side. So there might be some overlap. I don't think he, you can necessarily say he's a great Jedi, but you, he, he definitely played in that realm. 
Right. You know, whereas, um, well, I guess, I guess the main reason to talk about this is because of Ray, right? And the assertion of Ray being a great Jedi and, and how, you know, some people believe, even though maybe it wasn't the intention of the writers and directors of the rise of Skywalker, some people believe that they played a lot with the idea of gray Jedi. Right. Yeah. And that's what I was like, me and Chris kind of have like a, a, a one-off like conversation about it. And because like at the end, obviously, um, so at the end of, uh, rise of the Skywalker, uh, oh, it's called. <laughs> and she, she has the, the, the new lightsaber, and it's like the it's uh like an orange slash yellowish kind of color. I never got what exact color it is, yeah. but uh, generally like that's the color that like great Jedi will have, right? And so then like it made me think like okay, so Ray's supposed to be a great Jedi then, because so like then it made me start like uh, analyzing like um the story more, and then like I'm thinking I'm like okay. Are they so like? Are, am I meant to believe that like the story is really about her like learning the light and the dark side of the force, and then choosing the new path outside of? Because like that's the whole thing with that uh, Luke is always telling him, the Jedi Order must die, the Jedi Order must die, you know. And then she's like, you know, hell bent on keeping it all alive and stuff, but then you know. <clears throat> uh, ben is just like sitting there like kind of pulling her towards the dark side and you see her tap into the dark side obviously you know uh, with her her ancestry and stuff is very stiff uh, targeted and and you know so we're kind of like meant to believe that the story kind of lends itself to this is like their way of like introducing great Jedi to the world in a way, like, the only thing is, is, like, was that actually their intention, or is it just, like, an accidental, like, thing that just kind of happened, that they didn't really intend for that to be the, the case? And, like, is it just something that, like, people with uh, extensive knowledge of the extended universe kind of just, like, get something extra from it, you know? Because anybody who doesn't know anything about the extended universe is not going to know what the hell we're talking about right right well even if even so like that's all stuff that they've said doesn't exist in this world anymore pretty much and so i think i think it is an accident but i think it's doesn't matter because we can you know it's still its own thing and we can have these yeah. fun interesting conversations about how it works like I, I don't i don't care what jj abrams has to say about it like I, I do think like he just like you know luke's luke at the end of last jedi abandoned the idea that the jedi needed to end and admitted he was wrong and just grumpy or whatever like that's where right. we end up and then um ray using like force lightning like is i think intended to be foreshadowing for the reveal of her of her grandfather but it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter that that was their intention. What matters is we see her using the light and the dark. We see her with the yellow lightsaber. We see this character being pushed between good and bad, who's never fully become a Jedi, who doesn't become evil, and she stays in this middle road. And when you know about Grey Jedi, she fits the script, and it's it, it becomes very interesting. Yeah. I think it becomes a way better story if that's the case, you know? If, like, that's what you take from it, it becomes, like, tenfold a better story. But, like, doesn't mean that the story itself is, like, without its problem. Because if, if that wasn't their intention, then it's just a fucking a shit show. Right. <laughs> well, and, and on top of that, beyond Rise of Skywalker, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to do anything else with it. So. Yeah. I mean, they can kind of, like, take a look back and be like, oh, okay. So they're, you know, oh, great Jedi, we could do something with that. Right. You know, but. So one of the most, yeah. like, pure examples of the neutral is if anybody watched Star Wars Rebels, there's a character who's like a creature, a big creature, 
who speaks to the Jedi in the the show and he explains, you know, his name is Bendu and he's like I I I don't I'm I'm not a Jedi. I'm not a Sith. I'm I'm in the middle. I'm always in the middle. Like I can help, but I'm never going to choose sides. And ultimately when the Empire comes and tries to destroy the rebels on that planet, he interferes, but he's attacking both of them because they're upsetting the neutral order of how things should be. So, like, that's, like, the most pure example in what is considered canon of what might be a Grey Jedi. Aside from that, also Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka Tano is considered a Grey Jedi. So anybody familiar with those things, that's the ideal character, I guess. Right, and I, I'm still of the opinion that, like, Qui-Gon Jinn was definitely a fucking Grey Jedi. Because that's, yeah. like, one of the main things is, like, they'll go against, like, the Council and stuff like that. And like he often he often times like questions the the council. That he often times like I mean obviously the council didn't want Anakin to be trained. He, they were like, no, he's evil, you know, and they didn't really want him. They didn't accept him. But Qui Gon Jinn, he's like he's like he's seen something more in Anakin, and he wanted to give him the opportunity. So that's mm-hmm. kind of what. <clears throat> what kind of happened there. Yeah. I mean, if you want to think about it in terms of, of the real world, I guess, like if you want to relate star Wars to, to our real life, Jedi are essentially like monks, like, or priests, people that, that think that you should not hold earthly possessions or, uh, you know, be interested in romantic love or anything like the force is essentially like, like religion in a way like like it is your duty to uphold certain standards and and not allow certain emotions to overtake you the sith are the or I- pirates well yeah i mean they're they're people that are out for themselves they use uh you know they they might be like considered zealots or something they use their they use the force they bend it to their will they give they, they, they weaken themselves to make themselves more powerful. They like they give up parts of themselves to to abuse the force essentially. Um, and gray Jedi would be like normal people. We know it, it doesn't make us evil to feel anger. It doesn't make us evil to feel pain and to acknowledge that. Uh, but it makes us evil to give into it and to use our anger to kill somebody or to use our anger to to make someone else feel like shit like that's what a sith would do great jedi understand that we have these emotions but we can we can find a healthy way to overcome them like we're not we're not gonna you know be like jedi and say these emotions are not good we should not feel them we should avoid them because if we if we give in to them we will become sith right so that's kind of maybe the the hierarchy of it or the the scale i guess right yeah. so i don't know if that helped anybody maybe it made it more confusing but there you have it. There it is. And that's the way <laughs> right um but yeah i mean th- there's a lot of interesting like for me i don't know if anybody else would agree i'm sure people would disagree but for me, Mace Windu almost seems like a great Jedi to me, even though he's like very structured. He's one of the leading members of the council. His fighting style and the way he carries himself through some of the books and everything else, even like his fighting style is one of the fighting styles most similar to how a Sith would use the Force and how he would fight. I think that Mace Windu is close to a great Jedi. Maybe because like, I haven't read about him in like, the books and stuff. But I would disagree. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's hard to to see him that way when you see how he's treated Anakin, how he is so high up in the ranks of the Jedi Order, like he's so indoctrinated into it. Like it's hard to see him as you know someone who would kind of like not adhere strictly to the Jedi Code. But I, I think he is someone who does in a way, but like not in the way that. He's like has a relationship with somebody or things like that. Right. But I, I think in the way that he he is willing to use darker force powers when he needs to. 
right um but yeah uh is there is there anybody else that comes to mind for you um no i feel like i said somebody else i just don't remember i wish i kind of wanted to rip some of this down <laughs> yeah but you know i just kind of yeah are you familiar with uh assage ventress Um, no. So no. she was uh, Count Dooku's apprentice in the Clone Wars uh, TV series and a lot of books. Um, but she was never officially like a Sith. Um, and eventually she does turn against Count Dooku. Um, so like she's a character that I think would also be kind of considered a great Jedi. Um, especially yeah. she had relationships. She, you know, she helped out Obi-Wan Kenobi on occasions with information uh, but obviously, this is all in books and stuff that's like not considered canon, so it's hard to like talk about. And it's it's kind of inaccessible to a lot of like people who haven't read a lot of the books. Um, but yeah, yeah. But I think we do uh, all. I think it's pretty unanimous agreed, unanimously agreed that Qui Gon Jinn is um, a great Jedi, and um, Ray. I think. Yeah, I think I think the interesting conversation lies in in did did they want to allude to Grey Jedi with the la- with uh, the Rise of Skywalker or was it just kind of a coincidence? Uh, did it happen by accident or no? Yeah, for for me, it is a happy accident. Like, but I don't I don't care what the intentions were of the writers and directors. Like, because. Even if they didn't intend it, we're still having the conversation. It's still very real to us that that yeah yeah man agreed. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I think I think like it's there's not a whole lot on the topic of Grey Jedi. I mean, we can talk about we can talk about Darth Reven, um, who was uh was considered a Grey Jedi kind of. Uh, even yeah, though I mean, he like literally just switched. He just like kept switching sides. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Right, but even when he was like yeah. kind of bad, like he was still helping the Jedi in a way. Um, so it's like very uh all over the place. Um, if you guys like are unfamiliar with a lot of this stuff, like there are certain Star Wars books that I would highly recommend. We've always talked about the Darth Bane series, like read that immediately. Um, the Thrawn series is good. Um, but if you're looking for more like some of the great Jedi stuff, um, read Dark Disciple, which surround, uh, centers around uh, Quinlan Voss and Asajj Ventress and read um, Revan about Darth Revan. And um, you can kind of see more about him and, and, and get good examples of these characters. If you're listening purely from a movie standpoint, Qui-Gon Jinn is the reference. If you've watched some of the TV series, uh, Ahsoka, Tano, and Bendu are like the main ones. And then even uh, Ezra Bridger, one of the main characters from Rebels, kind of walks that line too. So, Yeah. 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 I mean, I just think like Great Jedi are cool. I don't know. Like, I don't know why I think they're so cool, but I just like, I like them. Like, so it's like I badly want my theory to kind of, like, pan out. I don't think it is because, like, I think, like, obviously different writers, different directors, and the movies are just such a hot mess that it's, like, it's hard to be like, yeah, this is, they actually had a really good idea and they actually implemented it. Yeah. I mean, based on the entire trilogy, like, it's hard to see anything that they thought was good and implemented thoroughly, you know? Because... It all just seems like they have some good ideas, and then it's just a hodgepodge of of nothing because th- there's no coherency to it. Yeah. Right. But as far as Grey Jedi go, like, I I think one of the reasons why they they're so appealing is because they're unique. They have different like some of them have different kinds of lightsabers. Like their their robes look really cool. Um, some of like their their actual like full Jedi robes and costumes, masks, everything. It like looks cool. So. It's just like yeah. something that's very interesting. 
Yeah, if you guys... Uh, uh, yeah, I was looking at that thing for... Um, yeah, see, they even have, like, an elite level of, like, Grey Jedi, too. Um, it says a group of renegade Jedi called the Grey Paladins. It's like, how can you not like something like that? Right. Yeah, and that's, I mean, even going back to the comments made by Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmad Best, like, some some of the, the mythology and, and you know, lore surrounding Star Wars is what makes it so interesting. And even, like, my fiancé, who is not a big fan of Star Wars in general, like, she'll ask questions because she hasn't watched the prequels yet, and she'll, like, be interested in the story of Anakin and kind of how he becomes Darth Vader, so she'll ask me about it, but... I want her to watch them, so I'll only give her tidbits, but I can tell, like, she's kind of interested, so, you know, I, I I can't wait for her to actually just be ready to watch the movies, so that she can, yeah. I, I think she'll get into it, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the that's, that's, like, an, another thing, like, um, similar is, like, you know, Lord of the Rings and stuff, uh, like, they'll make references to things that aren't in the books, but it, like, creates this sense of deep lore and enriched world building and it's like it's what makes things so interesting like you're like oh what is that about i want to go learn about it and so like that's why it's so intriguing like are the writers of rise of skywalker familiar with gray jedi like did they do this on purpose maybe maybe not you know from all the records we hear like they rewrote the script a hundred times and replaced the director and you know never really had a plan so it's hard to believe that but it doesn't matter because you know, hey, we're still talking about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's so cool, dude. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> and, like, a lot of people say, like, very Jedi were, like, very powerful, too. And, like, they were actually kind of feared. Right, because, I mean, it's unlike the Jedi, they're willing to tap into stronger powers that Jedi refuse to tap into. So, you know, like, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, Luke, Luke asked in Empire Strikes Back, he asked Yoda, is the dark side stronger? Because, you know, they were talking about it, you know, obviously that comes up. And Yoda says, no, only stronger in your mind. I think that's what he says. Um, but yeah, like when you're willing to use other powers that are, considered more powerful like the tapping to the dark side you're going to be stronger than people that refuse to use those powers because of their code or whatever else they believe in right yeah exactly so I mean so what do you guys like so listeners like what do you guys think like do you guys like the idea of the great dead eye do you think a movie <laughs> kind of more in depth of like being a great Jedi, would that be interesting to you? Like, what do you guys think about uh, the new trilogy? And, like, potentially, like, the newest trilogy was really just, like, them setting up for a great Jedi storyline. Like, what do, you, what do you guys make of all this? Let us know on Twitter. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like, Scott and I have, have had vehement disagreements about, you know, like, what uh what directors and writers say and whether you should listen to them or not and like in this in this case i think you know it like it doesn't matter if jj abrams came out tomorrow and said oh well, i don't even know what great jedi are because we can still have this conversation you know yeah. and and you know because so one of the things like i always come back to is jk rowling because she loves to tell people about harry potter you know, and one of the things she said was, uh, <laughs> one of the things she talked about was, you know, Hermione and um, how she described her as a black character in her initial description, right? Because she had like certain hair characteristics, but she never said she was black. But now she's telling us that that was the intention, right? Am I getting this right? Pretty much. Yeah. So uh, the, the 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 truth is, if you've read Harry Potter, you know that. 
if a character is black, she describes them that way. Um, and I actually have some evidence of that. So, so I'll, I'll read it to you. Um, so you, you kind of get a feel for it. Um, so there, uh, there, this one was from, uh, Goblet of Fire. It says, um, a tall black girl who played Chaser on the Gryffindor Quidditch team, Angelina, came over to them, sat down and said, well, I'll have, I've done it. I just put my name in talking about the Goblet of Fire. So, she, you know, random character described as black. And then again, in Order of Phoenix, it says, before Hermione could answer, a tall black girl with long braided hair had marched up. Hi, Angelina. So anybody of, of color in Harry Potter is always referenced as such. But if you believe that the description describes Hermione as black, even though she doesn't say black, that's fine. I don't care what, what J.K. Rowling has to say about it. That's my point. I know it's long-winded. I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, you did a lot of research there, bud. <laughs> well, you know, I've been rereading it. You know, I've been bored. And I can st- I still go to the gym, uh, not a public gym. My work has a gym that they sanitize thoroughly. And only, like, one person's in there at a time, usually, and it's me. Um, so I still go to the gym, and when I'm, you know, doing, like, a bike or whatever, I'm reading, and I'm usually rereading Harry Potter. So I'm just like, oh, these things come up, and I find them interesting to talk about, but I'm usually just talking to myself. <laughs> but, yeah. If you can't tell, I'm in the middle of Order of Phoenix right now. Okay. Hey, that so. What was that? Yeah, How's that going? Yeah, like how is how is reading your Oh going? no, yeah, yeah, it's great. I can see where you get lost right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I I love I love rereading Harry Potter. Like, you know, I I talk shit about J.K. Rowling sometimes just because I don't care what she has to say. But I love her work. I love the books. I I love rereading them because I always find something new or something interesting that I can think about or talk about. And, like, that's the same reason I reread Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, once a year or once every couple of years and reread The Silmarillion because there's always some new fun things to find. Um, I don't know. I just find it interesting. But, yeah. <laughs> um, have you been reading anything lately? Uh, no. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I've been uh, uh, on top of reading, rereading Order of Phoenix, and then obviously going to carry on to the rest of them. Um, I've been reading The Children of Her in, um, which is a story like related to Lord of the Rings, written by the same author in the same world. But yeah, I don't know. I love just like a lot of the mythology stuff and fantasy fiction, and so it's it's really I don't know. It's a good time to get back into reading stuff. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Um, do you have anything mm-hmm. else on the Great Jedi topic? Um, no, not really. Okay. Okay. Well, I yeah, think, I, I don't think... know. I'm having a hard time thinking at the moment, but no. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that'll that'll wrap us up and. Um, you know, obviously, like we said earlier, it, it you know, it'll be, it'll be, uh, kind of inconsistent with us both being here because who knows how things will play out. Scott's very busy right now and that's very understandable and we love him and we want him here, but you know, we understand, we understand brother. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all we have for you and make sure you follow us on social media at nerdy boys review and nerdy boys reviews on Facebook and uh, we are your hosts. I'm Nerdy Boy Christian. And I'm Nerdy Boy Scott. And as always, we have one message for you, and that is stay nerdy, boys. Stay nerdy, boys. Do, do, do.